Okay, today is Thursday, the last day of the week, because apparently there's a storm coming. So you probably aren't going to have school tomorrow, but we don't know. I digress. Who cares? If you wake up and you have school, you're just going to be incredibly disappointed. Our last unit in Chapter 7 is called 7.3. It's dividing polynomials by monomials. And for this particular one, they're using binomials again because it's the easiest thing to do. And like Chapter 7.2, which was multiplying monomials by binomials or trinomials or polynomials, the division <clears throat> is going to have three different ways we want to think of it. Now, the first way, we're going to model these expressions, model <clears throat> with both algebra tiles and or uh, area models. And you could do both. <clears throat> the algebra tile model is the, is the way we're going to default to for our modeling, but we'll look at both anyway. The first question gives us the binomial, 3x squared plus 6x, and it says, what would happen if you divided that by 3x? And if you think back to our monomial in 7.1, if we had 4x squared divided by 2x, that was a, a 7.1 question. We said we wanted to think of the top number as being your area divided by the side you know equals the side you don't know. Just like if we had a non-algebraic one with an area of 10 and a side of 5, if I wanted to figure out this missing side, I would say the area divided by the side I know will tell me that that missing side in that multiplication is 2. With that in mind, when we have this, we're going to have our area model with algebra tiles. And when we model it with algebra tiles, we can't draw the area first. It's almost impossible to put the area in there first. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the side that we do know, which is 3x. And I'm going to draw that in as one of my sides. OK. That's the first step. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put a line across there to give a rough outline for where my area inside there is going to go. So I'm just going to put a straight line across. And now I'm going to figure out how am I going to get <clears throat> 3x squared and positive 6x in there. So the first step, actually, hold on, before I get there, I'm going to put this in here too. There we go. There we have our, our template. So now we have our rough areas. And the first thing I'm going to do is drop a straight line down there. And when I do that, I can now see that I'm able to put in 3x squared, right? So I now have part of my uh, binomial that I have to put for the area. I'll do that again for you, just in case you missed that. So if I go back here, there's my 3x's right here, 1, 2, and 3. The area is going to be represented by this binomial. I just take these three lines, put them across, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this down here like this. And by doing that, I've created this first space for this, right? 3x squared. So there's 1x squared, there's 2x squared, there's 3x squared. So I now have part of my binomial. I now have to somehow squeeze in 6x's. So if I go down here like this, I have 1, 2, 3x's. Do it one more time. I got 1x, 2x, and 3x's. I can now erase all of this. All here. And I now have my side length, 3x, my area of 3x squared plus 6x, and the missing side, we can now see what it's going to be. What is that missing side up top going to be? It's going to be an x and a 1 and a 1. Do you agree? So when I look at that, that missing side is going to be an x plus 2. You with me? So therefore, therefore, therefore through modeling 3x squared plus 6x divided by the side I know, which is 3x, will equal the missing side, which is going to be an x plus 2. Does anyone have a suggestion how, without modeling, I could check my work using 7.2 ideas? If I say, well, if this is a side and this is a side, then this side times this side must be this. So if I reverse it, 3x, the side I know, multiplied by the other side that I know, should equal this, the area of it. And if I use a distributive property, 3x times x is 3x squared, yeah, and 3x times 2 is 6x, yeah. So that is my solution to the division. I can kind of double check my work 
Just like if I said, back in this easy question over here, if this was your question, and I said the area is 10, the side is 5, what's the missing side? You could say, well, 10 divided by 5 equals the missing side, which is 2. If I wanted to check my work, I could go 5 times 2 equals the area. That's just using a simpler question to kind of logically think about the area here. So let's look at B. Again, the top number is going to be our area. The bottom number is going to be one of the sides. And the other one is going to be the other side. Right? So if we said, again, just I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the area divided by the side I know will equal the side I don't. In this area model, since this represents one of the sides, I'm going to try and draw it first. I'm going to put an X and an X there. And I now have one of my sides, 2X. Right? And then I'm going to just draw straight lines across here. This is going to represent a template for my area. And in that area, I have to create 8x squared minus 2x. So there's an x squared and an x squared. 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 So as of right now, inside my area, I have 8x squared. But I still need to have another part, which is the negative 2x. And if I just put one straight line down there, and don't shade them in, I have my negative two x's, right? So what we have here now is our area, which represents 8x squared minus 2x, and we have our side, which is 2x. And the missing side is going to be the answer to that division, which in this case is going to be an x and an x and an x and an x. And this is going to be just a minus 1, right? So I'm going to shade this in. And therefore, the missing side length is 4x minus 1. So therefore, 8x squared minus 2x divided by 2x will equal 4x minus 1. Okay. Any questions on the modeling side of it? Makes sense a little bit? Makes sense? <clears throat> if we look at those two questions, again, and, I, and maybe I'll give you 10 seconds to kind of jot that down, but if we look at this question again, and we're going to determine the quotient this time uh, with area models. It doesn't lend itself as well in terms of, it's more of uh, mental math. So if I said, here's the here's the rectangle, and there's my side length, and I broke it up into two parts. The area of this part was 3x squared, and the area of this part was 6x. What would be the area, or the length, excuse me, of this one if I wanted to figure it out? Well, I would say the area of 3x squared divided by 3x would be what that side is. In this case, if I use my division, it would just be x, right? 3x times x would be 3x squared. And if I say the area is 6x divided by the side, I know 3x. What is that missing side? Well, 3x divided, or 6x divided by, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. x divided by x cancel each other out. I'm off with just 2. Oh, sorry, that's not where that goes. Oopsie daisy. Right there. So through just an area model, I can also see that 3x squared plus an extra 6x is area, that whole area, the composite area, broken into two parts of 3x squared and 6x. That's the area of the whole rectangle divided by the side I know will equal an x and a positive 2, or in this case, a plus 2. Does that kind of make sense too? Your default will probably be the algebra tile model, but it's important that you also do see it broken up into an area model because when you get into grade 10 math and you start doing uh, a binomial multiplied by a binomial, uh, you're going to use an area model to show that as well. You're going to use this type of model here. So it's important that you have kind of that represented in your head. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is we're also going to solve these questions without using any modeling and just do it uh, the default way of uh, breaking it down into the division of each term. So if we think about this question... That's the addition of two fractions. 
So if I think about, well, what can we do here? So if I go back to the addition of fractions, so if I gave you, uh, let's go with the multiplication of one half, uh, uh, no, that's not going to work. The addition of three quarter, no, that's not going to work either. Three eighths plus one eighth. If you were doing this question back in grade seven, what would you have done to solve it? Well, you learned that once they have common denominators, the rule is keep the denominator and add your numerators. And you would end up with an answer of four eighths. Everyone agree with that from grade seven? If you're adding two fractions together, the rule is if they have the common denominator, keep your denominator and add your numerators. So if we reverse that and look at this step right here and kind of mentally think of it as this, what would that have looked like here. What I'd like you to do is take a second and just try and figure out what would that have looked like here from this question. Go ahead and take a second and try that. Okay, hopefully what you've done is you said, okay, when I wrote this like this, I had this over this right here, and I had this over this right here. So if I reverse that, this would be 3x squared over 3x plus 6x over 3x, right? If this was my question, my denominator is the same, so I would keep the denominator and I would add the numerators, which is what I had, okay? But if this is the case, just like when we did monomials, I would not, I do not have to keep this fraction as is because I can actually reduce that to lowest terms. Three divided by three, monomial divided by monomial, coefficients become one over one. X squared over X would become X over one. So 3x squared divided by 3x is just going to be x. 6x divided by 3x will just be 2 over 1 or just 2. So when I reduce each part, thinking of it as fractions, I end up with x plus 2. Another way for you to think about that is you're kind of using distributive property but with division. Each term in the binomial must be divided by the monomial, right? Each term in the binomial must be divided by the monomial. And when you do so, you can write it like that, and you can end up with your answer of x plus 2. It's a lot of writing there. It looks like a hieroglyphics of a cave or something. If that's true, then we look at B. Each term in the binomial must be divided by the monomial using distributive property of division, 8x squared must be divided by 2x, and negative 2x must be divided by 2x. What are you going to get when you take 8x squared? Well, divide the coefficients, you get 4 over 1. x squared divided by x is going to be x over 1. You're just going to get a 4x when you divide 8x squared by 2x. Negative 2 divided by 2 is going to be a negative 1. x divided by x cancels each other out you end up with just a minus one. And therefore, without modeling, 8x squared divided by 2x, 8x squared minus 2x divided by 2x will be 4x minus one. 